Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Frankie Boyle. In the news this week. In central London, BBC arts editor Will Gompertz struggles with the weight of his massive frontal lobe. <laughs> In Durham, Mike Ashley regrets getting a zero hours worker from Sports Direct to set up his water slide. Having been home for almost a year, there are signs that astronaut Tim Peake is still struggling to adapt to normal life. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is an actress and comedian who performs in a Radio Wales sketch show, Die Laughing, is the name of the producer. <laughs> Please welcome Carrie Lloyd. And with Paul tonight is Giles Brandreth, a friend of Prince Philip. Philip says their friendship has helped him to welcome old age as he's looking forward to forgetting who Giles is. <laughs> Please welcome Giles Brandreth. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian Carriott, take a look at this. Uh, Tim Farron, it's the manifesto. Oh, <laughs> Theresa May, that's another manifesto. Corbyn, that's dead. The last Labour voter he's talking to. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's released their manifestos it's this manifesto week. Manifesto week. Yes. Like fashion week, but less interesting. At least the manifestos have come out because they were kind of just dripping out one yeah. boring policy a day, like a kind of diabetic advent calendar. <laughs> <laughs> you see things in such positive terms. <laughs> that, that is one of my more yeah. positive jokes. <laughs> Theresa May with that fake photo that they had, the bus, where she, there was a huge crowd of people and there was actually about 30 people outside the bus that was used on the Remain campaign. It's got the same number plate. Did you know that? Well, excellent. Recycling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's got the UKIP I'll, vote, she's I'll got the Labour that. vote, she's got the I'll Green give... vote now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give her that. Do manifestos have, have much point? Because British people generally vote for leaders, don't they? So at the moment, they're, they're kind of going, who would lead us if we were all stranded on a desert island? And they know that Theresa May would have us eating the wounded by nightfall. <laughs> and Corbyn would be hosting a two-hour meeting about whether or not coconuts have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't the argument that a lot of Theresa May's policies are Ed Miliband's old policies. Theresa Miliband? Yes. <laughs> I mean, who is this appalling <clears throat> Marxist? Chairman May. And Chairman May! <laughs> <laughs> I've stood in two elections. And not really, Giles? <laughs> <laughs> and I have to tell you that I've not met a member of the voting public who has ever read a manifesto. I certainly didn't trouble myself. Um, <laughs> feeling that the, the broad brush approach is what we need. And I think that's really... I mean, I, if I were Theresa May, I wouldn't have bothered with this. So she's got a very good, this strong and stable government, lovely line. <laughs> Nobody out there ever reads the manifesto. Giles, you went round a few doors, knocked on them, and quite rightly, the people pretended not to be in. <laughs> <laughs> the clue inside of your own house. <laughs> <laughs> I would put it to you, though, Giles, saying strong and stable over and over again isn't a strong and stable thing to do. <laughs> oh, so, you know, like... I, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you watched the build-up to the Anthony Joshua Klitschko fight. Oh, you? <laughs> Watch uh, it. I lived and, it. I lived it. <laughs> it was in one of the supporting yeah, bouts. <laughs> They were incredibly eloquent in the build-up to that fight. It wasn't yep. like a normal fight. They didn't trash talk each other. They were both very articulate guys. That's a better quality of debate <laughs> than we've had in the election. <laughs> but this is why, really, a manifesto is not necessary, because the odds seem to be in Mrs May's favour. She also has that lovely husband. So they're a marvellous double act. She has a husband. lovely husband, so what's, why does she keep bringing out this one, then? <laughs> <laughs> Why is she doing so well, May? Have you seen the opposition, Frankie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody has. But um, Theresa May looks like if the colour grey didn't care if you lived or died. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I think she is trying to extend her appeal beyond you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there was bad news and good news for the elderly needing care in their own home. Oh, yes. What was it? The value of your house will now be taken into account. The essence of it is that the social care is going to be paid somehow and it's going to be paid for by your house 
in the long term. But you and your partner can live in the house while you're alive, but the moment you are dead, out! Out! <laughs> <laughs> and let's sell the house and bring the money in. That's the essence of it. So this is another yeah. of those policies that presumably are going to really worry some of the papers yes. who, mm. who liked Sport this Mrs is... May. It's an attack on old rich people. Sensible candidates spend a lot of time in the old folks' home because they're the people are waiting to meet you lined up against the wall. Uh, gazing in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> and you okay. come with a local photographer, you come after lunch, they're dozing fitfully. You position yourself halfway down the line. When the photographer is ready, you go... <clears throat> they wake up, eyes open, photograph is taken, and there you are, you visited the old people. Broad brush, strong and stable government. That's what <laughs> Fingers and buzzers. <laughs> Let's see if you can tell me what revealing answers Theresa May gave to a series of quick-fire questions put to her by the Sunday Times. Question was, Sherlock or Midsummer Murders? What did she answer? She likes both. I've watched both. <laughs> She's not stupid, you know. <laughs> Broadchurch or Line of Duty? Both. Neither. <laughs> she said, I haven't watched either. Merkel or Macron? Oh, both. I'm looking forward to working with them. Almost exactly that. I'm going to work <laughs> with both of them. I could be a politician. It's incredibly easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even Giles did it. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Telegraph made a similar attempt to make her appear human and normal by asking her which Harry Potter character she most resembles. She is red, she claims, all the Harry Potter books. I don't know if you've seen the movies, but she wouldn't be drawn on which one she wanted to be. She's she Malfoy said, and she I don't think it. I'm similar. <laughs> <laughs> She's not Malfoy. I mean, those are the, the posh boys she's just replaced. She's maybe Thatcher's she? final horcrux. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched that. What she actually replied was, I don't think I'm similar to any of the characters in Harry Potter, but they are a great read for adults as well as for children. <laughs> uh, Unite boss Len McCluskey had some encouraging words for Jeremy Corbyn. What were they? He said we haven't got a chance. <laughs> he said we have 200 seats left, it's, that'll be it. Uh, that, you know, we won't win, we've got no chance at all. He said but 200 seats would be Labour's worst result since 1935, would be regarded as a success for Jeremy Corbyn. This is the mistake you see politicians <laughs> make, saying anything at all. Uh, <laughs> I think Charles, you, work, you seem to work. be saying don't say anything at incredible length. <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with the design of Labour candidate Roger Godsiff's campaign leaflet? Did it misspell the constituency or his own name? Uh, it was sort of beyond that. Beyond that. Shall we have a wee look? <laughs> <laughs> Unwanted, unnecessary and opportunistic. <laughs> you asked for honesty from your politicians. <laughs> uh, anything else catch your eye in the various manifestos? They're full of good ideas. Unlike mm. Giles, I thought they were terrific, actually. I mean, they're a lot of the same ideas, but... But this is because we're all now, broadly speaking, in the, in the middle ground. Little Tim Farron, looking like Daddy Wooden Top, we now... <laughs> He's allowing us to, you know, get high on the weed. That's lovely. That's clear there. Somebody make a gif of that immediately. <laughs> Don't <laughs> get high on the weed. I've kind of got addicted to watching Tim Farron. If you he's watch incredible. Him. He's incredible. He's like too. a sort of trendy vicar. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> OK, we're having a meeting at the youth club tomorrow. We're going to have a workshop on how to act normal around gays. <laughs> Did anyone see the BBC's Ben Brown cup a woman's breast while oh. talking to Norman Smith on Tuesday? No. Let's have a look. But already there's some uncertainty about what he was saying on benefits. Yes, Jeremy Absolutely Corbyn, fantastic. when he was asked... Oh, just give us one second. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn was asked whether he would end the freeze. And the BBC has spent years <laughs> trying to get away from this kind of thing. You know? <laughs> this was... is the ongoing... But you see, can I say, this is... No. This... No, I <laughs> This is the ongoing election campaign, revealing that she's a diabetic. Theresa May has admitted she injects five times a day. She really is going for that Scottish vote, isn't she? <laughs> As a father, I'll tell you what's a vote winner. Cutting paternity leave. <laughs> Paul and Giles, take a look at this, please. 
Ah, yes, uh, this is a hospital. The oh, uh, yes, is computer's it? going down. Uh, he's very angry about it. And there is the evil villain that's been making it all happen. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who can't afford their electricity bill. <laughs> so, hackers. It's anonymous hackers. hackers. Are they anonymous? I don't know where they're from. They are, no, we do know where they're are from. Are they from now. where they're from? They are from North Korea. Oh, it turns you. out. Has that been proven? Uh, not totally proven. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not going to sue me, so I, I think... No, I think it probably is North Korea. There's some... <laughs> that <were> in the, <laughs> something in the code, when it was unhacked, yes. indicated that it might have been from North Korea. Giles, and, you know way too much about this. I, well, <laughs> I think only, you only because I did, I did chair the Cyber Security Awards quite recently. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you where or when. Is that security or Alzheimer's? <laughs> <laughs> what the virus was called? It was oh. called WannaCry. Uh, it demands money before you can get your computer files back. Oh, yeah, it was all in Britcoins as well. Bitcoins. 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 <laughs> no, no, we've left the European market. No, Britcoins. <laughs> There's been a sort of failure of the government here, hasn't there? Or? They were warned. I mean, at least three years ago, that, that XP needed updating. But the trouble with um, the NHS, it spent a lot of money on IT already, about £12 billion, um, for a system that didn't work. So, essentially, it doesn't have any money left, so they didn't pay for the update. We've not upgraded the security properly, and we've been running the NHS on Windows XP, so people have probably been told that they're dying by a helpful paperclip. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that, the, as a hacker, you would target for a ransom the NHS, yeah. one of the few <laughs> world organisations you know doesn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> Probably giving Jeremy Hunt some ideas about how to get money out of <laughs> What must it be like being Jeremy Hunt at oh. the moment? Imagine he goes into hospital. He'll be the first person to have a, a sprained wrist treated anally. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr Hunt, this is going to involve a bit of a run-up. <laughs> Luckily, our computers are down, so there's no record of what's about to happen to you. <laughs> this bit of malware was actually stolen from the American National Security Association. You know, which is a misnomer. Well, I think President Trump gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what the Russians have said about it? That's what they're what they're Exactly. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're claiming it's not them because the Russian Interior Ministry was um, targeted. That was a decoy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so clever, Giles. Uh, these are just things I picked up at the cybersecurity conference. <laughs> the Russians have said this completely doesn't concern Russia. <laughs> Who else has been hacked this week? The Europeans and... Everyone's yeah. been hacked. Virtually everybody outside of North Korea has been hacked. Renault. <laughs> well, one of the big stories is uh, they hacked Disney uh, and they've demanded... Oh, yes. A ransom. Oh, Disney yes. have said it's disgusting to see people trying to make money out of piracy. <laughs> <laughs> said the makers of Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> 5. <laughs> this is the NHS computer hacking crisis. It's the biggest failure for the NHS since records began at three o'clock yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Nine NHS trusts were affected, records were lost, and people may have to wait six weeks to see a doctor. Amber Rudd said, the vast majority of patients will have noticed no difference. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, and a welcome return to the Jigsaw of News. Fingers on the buzzers, teams. It is uh, President Trump to be Mr Trump. Um, <laughs> once again, every time he does something, it just makes things worse for himself. They're now sort of relieved that he's going abroad for a couple of weeks just to sort of take the pressure off him being a fucking idiot. <laughs> If, as a result of his presidency, the world does indeed end, won't it be marvellous to think it happened in our time? <laughs> he might change what the word presidential means. Like, in a few years, yeah. you'll be going, oh, my uncle fell over and banged his head on a curb. He's been rendered completely presidential. <laughs> <laughs> he dismissed the head of the FBI this week. Coney, James Coney? Mr Comey was dismissed. Comey over. Because he was... <laughs> Investigating his connections with Russia. And now there's an inquiry. Who's been put in charge of the inquiry? They've got a special prosecutor. Oh. A former yeah. Yeah, head former of the FBI. FBI. And then when you open Robert up that special Luda. prosecutor, there'll be another little special prosecutor. <laughs> you open up, there'll be another... <laughs> <laughs> there'll eventually be exactly. a little bloke saying, did you do it? <laughs> He's Robert Miller, who was the former FBI director. Yes. James Comey's done something to get his revenge on Trump. Many ideas he has produced is? his memo. Oh, he yes, kept he a memorandum. Write, didn't he? Yes. yes. After 
Trump tweeted that he had kept, or suggested he might have kept a recording of the dinner that took place in February. Comey then came back to say, well, I kept a memorandum. And he said, will you drop the Russian stuff? So basically, he accused him of literally trying to interfere in the process of justice. And the Americans don't like that very much. So it is all going wrong. Yeah. And then the best bit was Putin, who was like, oh, if you want the transcript, we've got one. <laughs> <laughs> How did Trump's administration respond to Comey's leak? With confusion. <laughs> <laughs> With incredible confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, according to online news website Daily Beasts, uh, one official said, I felt like running down the hallway <laughs> with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> While another senior official said, I don't see how Trump isn't completely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> what else did Donald Trump do this week? He decided literally in the middle of a meeting with the Russian foreign minister that he would uh, yeah. meet, seen some stuff that had been given to him by some people, came from the Israelis apparently, he just passed it on. That's to the Russians. And then he goes out and says, why do people accuse me of being too close to the Russians? I don't know, Donald, I can't imagine. Trump defended his actions by making this speech. Look at the way I've been treated lately. <laughs> Especially by the media. No politician in history, and I say this with great surety, has been <laughs> treated worse or more unfairly. You can't let them get you down. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. When he says no one's been treated this badly, does he mean psychiatrically? <laughs> <laughs> Did he use the word surety? Yes. yes. <laughs> Great surety. Great surety. It is terrifying, isn't it? Surely if you were recruiting a spy, Trump would be underneath Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't believe any conspiracy theory at all. I think he is exactly what he is revealing. You just told us to North Korea had hacked the NHS. <laughs> 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 oh, no, no, that doesn't mean to change that <laughs> subject. <laughs> that, that is did, fact. That is please, fact. Please be quiet. Uh, how did... <laughs> he also... How did Sachs... Excuse me. No. He also... No. <laughs> he also... Giles. <laughs> Giles, when people hear your name, they often think jumpers. Ah. But I'm sure people who meet you must take their lives in other ways as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that Donald Trump is now at war with intelligence in two ways. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump said recently that every time he picks a phone up, he feels like someone is listening. That's what a phone is, Donald. <laughs> Donald Trump is increasingly unpopular with the CIA, where his Secret Service codename is JFK2. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Ooh. Football. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they? Mm. They're, they're men. <laughs> they're men with a cup. So they've done something well. They're a, they're a very special type of new football club. Oh, they're wearing green costumes. <laughs> costumes? <laughs> it's worse than me! The green's a clue. The green is a clue. Mm. It's an environmentally friendly football club. Yes. Oh, yes, you. indeed. That's the least I This is the news that oh, Forest... Oh, Forest Green Rovers yeah. or whatever. Forest Green Rovers. Yes. They're the first vegan football club. Oh. Vegan? They were promoted on Sunday for the first time in their history. Here's how the radio commentator described it. Let me tell you this. Cheltenham, Swindon, Newport, you're going to eat humus at the new lawn <laughs> next season because Forest Green Rovers are in the Football League. <laughs> Since going vegan, the players have had zero injuries, but how were some of the players and staff caught out last year? Eating pork scratchings after hours. Very close. The players and staff were secretly photographed at their local branch of Greg's. <laughs> Stuffing their faces. Here they are. <laughs> oh. The staff at Greg's didn't help the situation by telling the local paper, we get quite a few of the players <laughs> in here most weeks. <laughs> this is Forest Green Rovers, the first vegan football club, thanks to their eco-friendly chairman, Dale Vince. According to the BBC, the club has an organic playing surface spread with cow manure. In fact, if they put any more shit on the pitch, they'll qualify for the Scottish Premiership. <laughs> As a vegan team, Forest Green Rovers are looking forward to their derby with arch rivals KFC. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Your four are mm -hmm. a quilted jacket in old gold, the Da Vinci Code, Stork Margarine, and Ivanka Trump's fashion brand. 
So, oh, okay, the, the, the jacket is old gold coloured. Um, Dan Brown of Da Vinci Code, I don't know much about that, um, other than it was a film and a book, obviously. Stork might have changed its colour due to some sort of manufacturing process. Any idea about this, Jarvis? Well, colour clearly is involved. Orange, mm. possibly, is the colour, because orange is the colour of Ivanka mm. and of the <laughs> quilted jacket. Is, is it something light. to do with not being stocked? Because Ivanka's fashion line was dropped. And oh. it's one of the few things Trump was genuinely exercised about. His daughter's fashion line was dropped by one of the big department stores. Yes, it's much more to do with that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stork is no longer on the market, and the other three are. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and this old gold jacket has been dropped by. Not it's too dropped heavy. by yes. anyone. Thus, Not... the odd one out. Oh. It is the odd one out. Oh. D. <laughs> the answer is no one wants to buy them apart from a quilted jacket in old gold, which proved to be overwhelmingly popular this week. Rhea Hatton uh, wore one to the badminton horse trials, only to spot at least 16 others. She took some photos. Let's have a look at Rhea and the matching jackets. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 I'm laughing, but I'm going to go and throw mine away. <laughs> this isn't the only time someone has turned up to find everyone else in the same outfit. Did anyone see how Australian news anchor Amber Sherlock dealt with it? Wearing the same as the breakfast person on Norwegian television. I don't really know what that means. But... <laughs> Let's have a wee look at the clip. I need Julie to put a jacket on because we're all in white. I asked her. To, <laughs> I asked her before we came on. Julie, you need to put a jacket on. I haven't had time. Does someone? Come is there on! A... I told you. I told you two hours ago. We know in chat room. This is not. So I'm sorry. I've been flat out. Well, honestly. I'll call wardrobe and we'll get something. No, if, you, if, I, I've made this clear two and a half hours ago. Amber, if it's an issue, I can, I can get on yeah, out of here. It is an issue. Go and grab a jacket. I... <sighs> Time now to head into the chat room and joining me today is psychologist Sandy Ray in Melbourne and Nine Tilly Snook in Sydney. Uh, <laughs> yes. Why didn't you complain about the one on the right having the same hand as her in the middle? Perhaps it's like one of those fruit machines, you pull a handle and the three images eventually <laughs> <laughs> settle on three whites going across. Due to poor sales, Ivanka Trump's clothing line is being rebranded and sold at discount stores. What has the fashion label Chanel been criticised for this week? Oh, the boomerang. Yes. They've made a bejeweled boomerang or something? They've made a boomerang that costs £1,130. Wow. Goodness. Let's have a wee look at it. <laughs> Why is it dipped in chocolate? <laughs> I wonder what the returns policy is. <laughs> Oxfam is begging people not to take any more copies of Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code to its charity shops as it can't shift the many copies it already has. Here's how one Oxfam shop in Swansea illustrated the problem. This is the sign in the window of the Da Vinci Codes which said, you could give us another Da Vinci Code, but we would rather have your vinyl. <laughs> how did Stephen Fry describe the novel? He said it was body dribble. <laughs> Some religious conspiracy theorists have pointed out that if you read the Da Vinci Code backwards, it's actually a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Sales of stork margarine are decreasing as people prefer to spread butter on their toast. As you said, uh, people think it's healthier. According to The Guardian, recently there's been a rise in concern about trans fats. It's the last community you want to make a joke about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, someone's applauding. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Essex Birding, <laughs> the journal of the Essex Birdwatching Society. <laughs> Many people in Essex are twitchers, but that's mainly due to cocaine. <laughs> and we start with... Revealed. Queen has a top secret what? Lover, just to help out when Philip retires. Are you offering, Giles? I don't think that's what he's retiring from. <laughs> uh, the Queen has a top secret Facebook account. <gasps> oh. No way. One reason the Queen gets lots of Facebook messages is because she has two birthdays <laughs> a year, one each for her human and lizard forms. 
<laughs> you and David Icke. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I wanted to be the new editor of Essex Birding magazine and the old editor, what? This Felt quite... my hands around his scrawny neck as I choked the living daylights out of him. <laughs> And the old editor said I could, that was fine. Pretty much. The answer <laughs> couldn't have said yes any quicker if he'd tried. <laughs> In fact, the only time any editor has said yes quicker is when Kelvin McKenzie asked, shall I offer my resig... <laughs> <laughs> Don't think he offered his resignation, no. <laughs> Next, Gran accidentally what after taking what? Gran accidentally dies after taking bird seed instead of aspirin. <laughs> The answer is, drives 300 miles to Scotland after taking the wrong turn off. Oh. Oh. This is Valerie Johnson, who accidentally drove 300 miles from England to Lanarkshire when she missed a turn off. She thought she was following the right motorway on the map, but it turned out to be a varicose vein. <laughs> and finally, wedding photographer accidentally what? Conjures up the spirit of Beelzebub and ruins reception. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally photographs wrong couple. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Spends six hours taking pictures of wrong couple. <laughs> oh. Jacob Peters made an expensive mistake last weekend when he accidentally photographed the wrong couple's oh. proposal. Also this week, a groom got into trouble after a bee disrupted his wedding. Let's have a look. And to be your companion and your friend. On this journey that we make together. On this journey that we make together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was a beat. <laughs> Straight after that, she pretended to see a wasp near his balls. <laughs> so the final scores are Paul and Giles have eight points, mm -hmm. and Ian and had have six. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop, Cariad Lloyd, Paul Merton and Giles Brandreth. And I leave you with news that, as Labour's election campaign continues, party workers are concerned that some members may have misunderstood the phrase, touch base with the public. <laughs> <laughs> After pledging that, if elected Prime Minister, he would legalise cannabis, Lib Dem leader Tim Farron denies trying out the drug for himself. <laughs> And at a Moscow press conference, one journalist tries his luck asking Donald Trump, who's America's top spy in Russia? <laughs> Good night. It's Ed Balls next Friday, and we promise no dancing at night. Now, good news, the hospital's employed a health nutritionist. The bad news is he's about to ban sugar. Hospital people, next. <laughs>